Hello everyone, this is Marshall Giller, Head of Investment Research here at FX Primus, bringing my European opening market comment for September 22nd. Well, we had the long-awaited FOMC meeting last night. As expected, the Fed did not hike rates, but it did keep the door open for a rate hike in December. They said that the case for an immediate increase in the federal funds rate is stronger than it was when they last met in July. As the near-term risks to their outlook are now roughly balanced, but they d determined nonetheless that it would be sensible to wait. Chair Yellen explained that slack in the labor market is being taken up somewhat more slowly than in previous years. What that means is that even though the number of new jobs every month is pretty strong, that's the yellow line here, the unemployment rate, the blue line, isn't falling. It was the same 4.9% in August that it was in January. And broader measures of unemployment, such as people who are working part-time but would rather work full-time, have flattened out too. The FOMC wants to let the unemployment rate get below 4.8%, which is what they estimate to be the long-term equilibrium level of unemployment in the U.S. Now, it's curious that uh, Chair Yellen spent a lot more time talking about employment than she did about inflation, which is consistently running well below their forecasts. That suggests to me that they're simply ignoring the inflation picture, or largely ignoring the inflation picture, and instead looking to raise rates as soon as the employment picture makes it politically possible. Also, she explained that since monetary policy is only modestly accommodative, if inflation did start to accelerate, they wouldn't have to raise rates very quickly or very far to shift to a tighter policy. One curious point is that divergence of uh, views on the FOMC is increasing. Three of the 12 voters dissented because they wanted to hike rates at this meeting. At the same time, looking at the dot plot, there are two people who see no need for a rate hike at, at all this year. So the committee's views are becoming more polarized. Nonetheless, the message from the meeting was clear. Even though they want to hike, they see the future path of rates being shallower than it was before. You can see here how the average forecast for rates at the end of each year, the, the yellow line, came down compared to June, the gray line. Uh, the blue line represents what the market's expecting, which is still much lower than what the FOMC sees. The median FOMC member is now looking for only two rate hikes next year instead of three previously. That's assuming that they have one hike this year. And they continue to lower their estimate of the long-term equilibrium, le equilibrium level of rates. While they revised down their interest rate forecast and the long-term view, uh, there were really no significant revisions to their economic forecasts. So they must simply believe that the appropriate level of interest rates is getting lower for any given level of economic activity. Over the longer term, that could be negative for the dollar, <laughs> except that probably every major central bank uh, thinks the same way. Unusually, the implied interest rate on the Fed funds rate futures actually moved up slightly after the meeting. Previously, the FOMC has revised down its forecast every meeting, but the markets move down its forecast too each time. This uh, makes me think the market may now be thinking the Fed's reaching the limits of its dovishness. That's why I think, although the immediate impact of the meeting was negative for the dollar, I think this may represent the bottom or near the bottom for the U.S. currency. I expect the market will start to give more credence to the Fed's tightening intentions from here, and that's likely to put support the U.S. currency going forward. Separately, given all the attention to the Bank of Japan and the FOMC meetings, people probably aren't paying that much attention to the uh, Reserve Bank of New Zealand meeting. So I'll deal with that briefly. The RBNs had kept rates on hold too, as everyone expected. But it said further policy easing will be required to get inflation up to the middle of its 1% to 3% range. Currently, it's only 0.4%. Nonetheless, the Kiwi rose slightly probably because rate cuts were already priced in, and so there was no surprise here. For an update on the U.S. indicators coming out today, please watch my North American opening market comment. This is Marshall Gettler, Head of Investment Research at FX Primus. 
Get more market insights on our education pages and turn your trading ideas into action with FX Primus, the safest place to trade.